first of all we will double click on the semantic manager icon and here it will open up the software and in this new project wizard we don't need to do anything we can just cancel this menu and we will just go to the new and here we will create a new project we can give it a name here we can write here like my first project after writing the project name we can select the storage location to select the storage location we can click on the browse button and we can select any folder or drive on the hard disk uh, but today i'll keep this location as it is and we can just click on the ok button to proceed now our project is created here but this project is empty so we will click here right click here and we will go to insert new object and we will click on the semantic s7300 station there are a few other options here like 400 station pc hmi and pgpc but today we will select semantic s7300 station and once our station is added we can open it and here you can see the hardware configuration option and uh, we will double click on it to open it and it will open uh, windows here and this will be used to configure the hardware for this project here we can add cpus io modules and configure the communication like profibus or mpi for your cpu so first of all we will go to the semantic s7300 we'll open the rack 300 and we will double click on the rail it will add a rail on the project the next thing we want to add is our cpu so today we will add s7 314-2dp we can drag and drop this cpu onto the rail here another menu opens and here we can select the profibus address and we can configure profibus communication options and the network settings here but today we will not using all these options so we will just click ok now our cpu is added onto our project here and as you can see that this cpu has some digital inputs and outputs and analog inputs analog outputs high speed count option and uh, positioning option but today we will be only discussing this digital inputs and digital outputs so if we come down here and as you can see here this is showing it, this cpu has 24 digital inputs and if you come here you can see i address and the q address in a siemens semantic manager i means input and the q means output so i124 means our input address is starting from i24 and q124 means our output addresses are also starting from q124 if we double click on it it will again open a menu here and if we go to the addresses you can see here the input addresses and the output addresses if we right now these are system default addresses so these are assigned automatically by the semantic manager if you want to change these addresses you can also do this one first of all we will uncheck the system default options and and we can now change the input addresses we can put here like zero and same way we can change the output addresses as well we can start it from zero so we'll just click ok and as you can see that uh, right now both i and q addresses have been changed and both are starting from the zero now we will just save and compile the hardware configuration and it has saved and compiled without any error so we will minimize the hardware configuration we'll go back to our project 
and now if you see here a cpu 314c has been included in the project so we'll just open this cpu go to s7 program and you can see here sources blocks and symbols all of our programming will be done inside these blocks and whatever the symbols or the memory bits which we will create in the blocks will be included into these symbols or we can create symbols in this symbol table for example if we double click on it and as you can see that a new menu appears and this is our symbol editor like we can write here digital input di1 okay and we can give it address as i 0, 0.0 and this input is boolean input so we can select the data type as boolean the second thing we can write here is the digital output do1 okay so the as we have discussed earlier that the output addresses in siemens are starting from q so we will write here q 0.0, .0. and again this one is a boolean and now we have created two tags in the symbol table which is di1 and do1 digital input one and digital output one now we will use these two tags in our program so we will save these tags and minimize this one as well and we will open the programming blocks and we will go to the ob1 which is our organization block in this block we will create a simple one line program so we will open this one and as soon as we open this one here are few options the most important is this one we have to select the programming language in inside this programming block today we will be writing in the ladder logic so we will select lad which is for the ladder logic and click ok as you can see that the ob1 has been opened up and already on one network one is created inside it in this organization ob1 we want to create a ladder logic in such a way that whenever our input i0.0 .0, which is digital input one is on it should turn on the q0.0 .0 digital output one and whenever the digital input i0.0 zero is off it will turn off our output q0.0 .0. to make a ladder logic first of all we will select a normal open contact here and as you can see that now it is asking for the address so we will select here the input address i 0, 0.0 which is our first input and as you can see that it's symbol is also mentioned here which is di1 so whenever this input is on we should turn on the q0.0 .0. so to turn on the q0.0 .0, we have to insert a coil here so we will click on the coil and we will give this coil address which is 0, 0.0 q0.0 .0. and as you can see that its symbol is also indicating do1 which is digital output one and now we have uh, created a simple program we will just save it and now we want to test our ladder logic so to test this ladder logic we'll go back to the project we will select the s7 300 and we will turn on the simulation okay now the simulator is loaded the next thing we want to load the program into this simulator so to load this one we will select s7300 station and click on this download button and it is saying it is unable to reach okay but 
we will select here the MPI communication. And after selecting MPI, we will just again repeat the same step. Select S7300, click on the download button. And it is saying that the all the data in the PLC will be replaced. Okay, proceed. Yes, yes. And now the program is uploaded into the CPU. And now we will go back to the organization block one. And here we will click on this monitor button. And monitor button will stop monitoring the ladder logic. Right now our CPU is in stop mode. We can click on the run mode and it will turn the CPU into the run mode. Now CPU is in the run mode and it don't show any error. This means that everything is good. As you can see that our input is I0.0, .0 which is IB0 data register input byte zero. So we have already selected here IB0 and it's bit zero. 0, .0 means bit zero. So we will trigger this bit. And as you can see that I, as soon as I turn on this bit, this normal open contact is closed and it has turned on the Q0.0 output bit. And this also gets indicated in the output register QB0 and its bit zero is also turned on. And as I turn off this bit, input bit I0.0, it had also turned off the Q0.0 output bit. So a uh, simple one line ladder logic is working. So this is how we can create a simple project in Semantic Manager for S7300 PLCs. I hope you liked today's video. Please do share, like and subscribe this channel and press the bell icon for more upcoming video tutorials. Till next time, take care and goodbye.